Hello everyone, it's great to see you again. For today's episode, I thought it might be fun to show you what my average day looks like. So here it is, a day in the life. My day begins at 5 a.m. I brew a pot of tea and then head back upstairs to make the bed. Psychologically for me, making the bed brings an instant sense of accomplishment. It's a little win that leads to bigger wins throughout the day. I feel equipped to unravel the secrets of the universe, or at the very least, to pick up the socks that litter the bedroom floor. My day can't begin until I've made the bed. Binky the cat and Avery the dog seem to appreciate a well-made bed as much as I do. Next, I bring Avery to the local dog park. Today, she has a play date with her friend Cosmo. After Avery has romped for one full hour, I return home to fix breakfast and to prepare for my own exercise routine. Well, my trainer will be here shortly, so I need to have a good breakfast that will get me through the workout. So, I'm going to fix a very simple bacon and egg breakfast burrito. Two eggs, tiny amount of sea salt because the bacon is salty, a little black pepper, and whisk. Yeah, this is going to be a very simple bacon and egg breakfast burrito. Then I want to add some fresh chives from the garden. Just for a little flavor kick. I cooked a whole pound of bacon a while back and then I put it in the freezer. So all I have to do is put the bacon in paper towels and then crisp it in the microwave. That will take only one minute. And here's the tortilla for the burrito. Now, let's head over to the stovetop. Now, the trick to good scrambled eggs is to use plenty of butter and to use low heat so that the eggs turn creamy instead of hard. Go the eggs. And there we are. The eggs are done. The bacon is done. Well, I decided after all of that to ditch the tortilla. So I just had bacon and eggs with the chives. And then I used only three strips of bacon for my breakfast. And I'll save the other two slices for Avery. Now, the reason I decided to forego the tortilla is because I'm probably going to fix a pound cake later today, and I don't want to overdo the carbs, okay? But this breakfast is just perfect. It will give me plenty of energy for the workout. I love the fresh chive. I work out on my own five days a week and with a trainer twice each week. My trainer is Dwayne Boyer. Dwayne has been a godsend for both me and my spouse. He knows how to push us farther than we think we can go. We do 20 minutes of cardio and 40 minutes of combined core exercises and weight lifting. A quick shower and then I'm ready for the computer by 9 a.m. I start by responding to the always appreciated comments both on this YouTube channel and on my website. Then I work on my next cookbook, which I hope to finish by Christmas time of 2022. Then it's time to make a cake that I will serve for afternoon tea. I've decided on a lemon loaf cake that smells as wonderful as it looks. 
Break three eggs into a large mixing bowl. and whisk them violently. Then whisk in one cup of either castor sugar or granulated sugar, one cup of sour cream, a half cup of neutral tasting vegetable oil, the grated zest of one lemon, two tablespoons of pure lemon extract, and one and a half cups of self-rising flour. Mix only until the flour disappears into the batter. Pour the batter into a buttered and floured nine by five loaf pan. Bake at 350 degrees for 50 to 55 minutes. Let the cake cool in the pan for 30 minutes and then unmold it and let it cool completely on a wire rack. While the cake is cooling, I drive to the berry farm to pick up salad greens and loose leaf tea. Located in Chatham, New York, the Berry Farm is a family-owned farm and farm store. It is my favorite place to shop. For tea, I select English Breakfast and Earl Grey. Then I select greens and veggies, including broccoli and some peppery arugula that was grown right here at the berry farm. I decide these radishes are too beautiful to resist. Home again, the cake is now cool enough to glaze and decorate. For the glaze, I'm using sifted confectioner's sugar and lemon juice. Whisk to a thick, pourable consistency. Then pour the glaze on top of the cake. For decoration, I'm using organic lavender blossoms, which have a glorious perfume. And to further gild this lily, I'm adding some organic rose petals. Now I must bring Avery for a walk in the garden before my business associate arrives for tea and cake and a brainstorming session. Lisette Gomez has arrived for our meeting. Lisette has a degree in marketing. She's helping me to fine tune the Kevin Lee Jacobs brand. I'm grateful to have Lisette on board. The lemon loaf cake was so delicious that I ate several slices of it. So for dinner tonight, I think an arugula salad will suffice. In addition to the arugula, I'm adding a hothouse cucumber that I'm slicing on my mandolin. Safety first. For a pop of color, I'm adding a radish. Oh, 
I will dress the salad with a simple vinaigrette of extra virgin olive oil, apple cider vinegar, whole grain mustard, a little salt, some black pepper, and some garlic paste. Give it a good shake and then pour it on. Give it a toss, add a fluffy homemade roll and perhaps some Sauvignon Blanc. And this has made a complete meal that I will enjoy in front of the TV. I'm binge watching The Gilded Age. 10 o'clock at night, it's been a really long day. I've been up for what? About 16 hours. So uh, Binky and I are going to bed. Probably Avery will join us shortly. But I wanted to tell you that I always like to go to bed with a good book. And tonight I'm rereading Provence 1970 by Luke Barr. Let me read this little blurb here. Provence 1970 is about a singular historic moment. In the winter of that year, more or less coincidentally, six iconic culinary figures, including Julia Child, James Beard, and M.F.K. Fisher, found themselves together in the south of France. They cooked and ate and talked late into the night about the future of food in America, the meaning of taste, and the limits of snobbery. It's a really good read. I hope you'll check it out. So I'm really sore from the exercises that Duane had me do, but it's a good kind of soreness, okay? So yeah, long day. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. I hope you'll post a comment below. Maybe let me know if you routinely make your bed in the morning. And again, thank you so much for spending the day with me. All right, nighty night.